Hello everybody, my name is Bolu Mitrescu and today we're interviewing Prasadam Schmidt. And uh, Prasadam is an artist, a philosopher, a meditation teacher, but also a developer of the Brain Rhythm Meditation Method and also an NLP trainer. And today we're going to talk a little bit about NLP and the connection with uh, spirituality and how Prasadam sees that. So Prasadam, thank you so much for doing this interview uh, with us. And, um, you know, I've read and I've heard that you are living a quite exciting life and that you're fascinated by curiosity, discovery and, you know, what really amazes people. Can you elaborate a little bit on that? Um, yes, I think trying to discover the, 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 the beauty of life is the essence of everything. Maybe I started with aesthetics and that's why I became an artist. Mm -hmm. I always wanted to paint. I always saw beauty and I wanted to to grab it, to hold it, to contain it and to express it and I think that's the main reason that I started just an investigation in, in, in what's life and what's the essence of it and then from one to another and that's the next step and that's the way it evolves. Okay and the, the element of curiosity what is that for you? What does it uh, contain for you? Curiosity is the driving force to, to understand. Without curiosity, I think there's no drive for you to, to, to even start looking for something. Yes. And it doesn't matter if it's beauty or whatever. But it's, it's, it, it, it leads you towards discovery. Mm -hmm. Okay. And you're also an NLP trainer. Yes. Uh, quite familiar and, uh, you know, you have a vast amount of information on NLP and experience. So what was your first encounter with NLP? How did you get into it and what drew you to NLP? Um, <coughs> I've been a sannyasin. A sannyasin is uh, somebody who quite enjoyed listening and going to Bhagwan in mm -hmm. the time in, in India, in Pune and later on in America. And I was there once and did a workshop, a three-month workshop, divided into three parts. And one was dehypnotizing. Mm -hmm. The next one was NLP and Ericksonian hypnosis. And the third one was the synthesis, actually, of all the two earlier ones, meditation and NLP. Mm -hmm. And there was a wonderful lady leading that workshop, Ragini. And the whole thing was inspired also by Bhagwan, who mm -hmm. had a, a knack to, to, to assemble the most beautiful people as, as helpers, as tutors, as teachers. And I, I, I got there and I found out that already with dehypnotizing de and then NLP, a deeper level of, of, of how we tick, what happens to it, how we program ourselves and mm -hmm. how we get to understand what is reality. And then to get out of this conditioning mm -hmm. and to open yourself up yeah. and helping other people to recognize a similar process in themselves so they can open themselves up to what I call the beauty of life. Yeah. And what elements of NLP really grasped you? Something that you thought, wow, that is something new, something that resonates with me. It started there with, I, I think, in, first of all, the, the Mita model. Mm -hmm. Because that was a sort of a, an introspective way to analyze yourself, analyze myself, I must say, in a way that I've never ever encountered before. And I was, a, I was really interested in spirituality. That's, of course, the reason why I went to Bhagwan in the first place. Yeah. And there I, I was just confronted with the fact that I didn't know myself. Mm -hmm. And that was fascinating discovery, you yeah. know. Yeah. And I enjoyed the, the way of, of analyzing one another and myself of what I did, in what way, in what form I had conditioned myself during the time that I was completely unconscious of doing it. Yeah. 
So that was, to me, it was fascinating. And then, of course, another model, uh, the uh, Mil Milton model, yeah. I also like very much. Also because of the semantics, the, the linguistic aspect of it all. This yeah. is, f this is f to me, very interesting. I like languages. And uh, so language as an instrument for growth, individual growth, and then finally worth all about is spiritual growth. Yeah. And of course that has evolved since I was in Pune and in America. It changes, you grow and environment grows and yeah. the way of looking at life grows. Yeah, because uh, spirituality is quite an important part yes. of your life. Yes. How do you see the connection uh, with NLP and spirituality? How, okay. how do you combine that? That's interesting. That's interesting. To give a short answer first, I think spirituality is the unfoldment of consciousness. And to extend it a little bit, to me, spirituality is nothing airy-fairy, funny, or strange, or esoteric, or whatsoever. Mm -hmm. Spirituality is the most basic, down-to-earth thing that there is. I, also, I always enjoyed hearing that those mystics and all these spiritual people they had their, lived with their heads in the clouds, etc. To me, I was always with my heads in the cloud because I didn't know reality what it was. I yeah. missed my own being. I didn't know who the hell I was. Yeah. So how can I tell people that say reality is different and they explain and I can understand mm -hmm. that they're living with their heads in the clouds? No, they are having their feet on the ground. They know what it's yeah. all about. And I had to learn what it was yeah. to jump into reality. And. Uh, Spirituality is just, to me, a word that, that describes an area of human growth that we have not yet described in psychological terms because we haven't reached that level yeah. of understanding. Some people did, we know them from history, from scriptures, etc. Lao Tzu, Buddha, Christ, Muhammad, you name them. You and I have not yet, and here I can't see <laughs> a halo on top of you. <laughs> not yet. <laughs> <laughs> We're on our way. Yeah. But, and that is, the, that is for me spirituality. Spirituality is to learn to understand myself in the area that is part of me, but that I have not reached yet in full grasp of my intellectual consciousness yeah and you talked about uh, realizing reality yes. discovering that have you discovered reality oh Where well are you on I track oh uh, well it's uh, i won't go into all details i think that's not necessary but thanks to first of all thanks to the environment in 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 india i have been very lucky to be able to develop certain, uh, develop is much, is a heavy word again, to have experienced quite interesting yeah. moments, yes. And did NLP kind of help you on your spiritual path? Absolutely. And, and how did it help you? As I mentioned before, the Milton model, the, 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 the Mita model, are instruments to recognize your makeup. Once you understand that, you understand that this is part of your, of your consciousness. Yes. yes. So that's the first step in understanding. I've got to do something with recognizing the full consciousness of my being, of, of myself. Yeah. So NLP is actually for me the first step in realizing what consciousness, what spirituality is. And I think everyone, if they call it spirituality or not, Everyone who is engaged in personal development is actually answering to the 
evolutionary impulse to develop him or herself to reach insight, mm -hmm. insight to the essence of your being. Yeah. And that is spirituality. So every step in spirituality, if you're only engaged in trying to be kind to your wife, or if you are engaged of being a better salesman, or if you find NLP techniques that help you to become less angry or less anxious or whatsoever, it's all in the very same process of becoming more spiritual. You may not recognize it, but to me, spirituality is any step in your own development. And the clearer you become in recognizing this is all part of the expression of consciousness in its unfolding process, mm -hmm. the closer you are recognizing that you're actually a spiritual being yeah. and nothing but that. And also you're an artist and art has a big yes. you know, place oh, yes. in your life. Absolutely. How does it shape your life? How do you use it in your own personal growth? Or Well, to me, art is a form of meditation and uh, Also, yeah, this is many aspects. It's also a discovery trip, a discovery of your own being and how you relate to reality. Understanding, for, I'll give you one example, because it's very complicated, I'll give you one example. To me, there is no such thing as Um, what you call it, uh, realistic art. If I ask you to, to, to draw this and you might say, oh, I can't draw a, a pair of spectacles, it's too difficult. Oh, that's too difficult for me. Then I may ask you, how do you know it's a pair of spectacles? And you say, yes, I recognize it. Well, if you recognize it, something has to happen from your perception in your eyes to your brain and then you go to, to memory and say, ah, I know that thing, it's a pair of spectacles. Yes. Which means that you're not seeing the spectacles anymore, but you see your memory. Mm -hmm. So you lose your view on reality. There's no reality wow. once you recognize things in, in, yeah. as, as we do normally. Yeah. If you can shortcut, you're looking at the thing without naming it to see the essence of it, so don't put words on it, don't, don't give it any other thing than just watching, not looking, but seeing, mm -hmm. then it loses any connotations with anything recognizable because there's no memory anymore. Yeah. Yeah. And then it's abstract because there's not, you haven't seen it before. Yeah. So again, to make a long story short, if you look at a Rembrandt, and you see the Rembrandt, it is just as abstract as a Mondrian. Yes. Yeah. Because once you see a Rembrandt, then you see what he done on canvas. Yeah. And you don't need, well, yes, Rembrandt needed his puppets, so to call it, his dolls or his figures, his figurines to paint his abstract painting, while Mondrian uses squares and horizontals and verticals. Yeah. But they're both as, as abstract if and when you see, not when you look at it, yeah. when you really you see, see it. it. Yeah. Yes. So that's understanding that learning to see beauty because it helps you to be here and now. If you are aware that anything that happens with your perceptive channels, mm -hmm. if you understand that you're always in the here and now, if you see, if you hear, if you smell or whatever, you can't smell yesterday, you can't smell tomorrow, you can't see tomorrow, you can't see yesterday, but there's always an expression of here and now. Realizing that, being vulnerable and falling into perception, then you see the world abstractly and then beauty arises because it is so exciting, it is it's so wonderfully beautiful whenever 
You are in the here and now. That is just a feast, a party. It's, it's <laughs> exquisite to yeah. be allowed to pick up your brush every morning and say, here we go again. Yeah. And see the process of working in and with beauty and expressing it as a, a sort of an interchange. You see yeah. and you be and you are and you do and you process and uh, it's lovely, wonderful. And in the moment, it's another new adventure. Every time, yes. Every time a new discovery. Every brush stroke is a surprise to me. Yeah, that's uh, wonderful. And you once mentioned also that uh, you, the path is also to inner beauty. W yes. What do you mean by that? It's the same thing. Okay. Beauty is an expression of consciousness. Call it inner, call it outer. It doesn't matter. It's it's it's. it's it's the same, there is no chain, no difference between inner and outer once you are on the move. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you, you know, you're doing many things. You're an artist, philosopher, you do a meditation teacher, NLP. Yes, yes. Um, you live quite spiritual uh, with a good focus in the you know, here and now. So it seems like you're a modern version of Leonardo da Vinci. <laughs> What is your plans for, for the future? What are you going to do more? Because you already are living this rich life. I have no plans to, 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 to reach something. I'm all right. I live in the country there and I have no financial problems and, and I have my brushes and I have my meditations and I have people I talk with. And I am, uh, I, that's it. I'm quite happy. Quite happy. That's the yeah. way it works for me. And is there anything you would like to say on what you do in your life, on meditation or NLP, that you want to well, share I with, like, I li with viewers? I, I like NLP very much because I think it's the first step that helps people to realize that there is a possibility to, to develop themselves. Yes. And a possibility to understand that what they have made of their lives up to now is only fragment of uh, a fragment of what is potentially in their being, what is available to them. Yeah. So NLP is to me such a beautiful way to to give people to help people to open their eyes in the, in the visual way yeah. if you use the visual. Vac terms. And um, as a final question, where do you see NLP developing? Where do you see it going in the development of people themselves, in society, for themselves, among others? Yes. Well, uh, that's one of the beautiful things I think of NLP, and that's why I enjoy it. One of the things that's why I became to, in, to uh, started to enjoy it so very much is the eclectic aspect of NLP. It doesn't confine itself to, to one or two theories of people that's thought, oh, let's develop something interesting. But anything that is available in, in, in the structure of human growth, mm -hmm. and NLP finds it and says, can I use it? Adapt it to certain strategies and certain thoughts, certain patterns, they use it in NLP, so I think that's one of the most beautiful things. It is never, it is never saying that is enough. We are complete. It's like human being, in his development, is not complete. Yeah, he's on his way, and NLP is that as well. And I think to just hand us the, the, those possibilities, and as people are different, there are so many different strategies in NLP. That to me is the beautiful thing. It opens itself up reaches out and says, what can we do to even become more complete? Yes. That's beautiful. Marcelo Schmidt, thank you so much for this interview. It was a pleasure being thank with you. you.